if you've got, um, let's say, a large equation system, obviously if, if you have two equations or three equations, not that hard to tell if they're linearly dependent on each other. But if you have 100 equations, it's really hard <laughs> to see if I could multiply the other 99 by equations by a constant and get the 100th equation, right? So, but this is kind of why we're interested in it. It's going to tell us whether we can solve equations or not. Let's see how many more we got. Oh, good. I think we can do this. All right, so here's, an, here's a couple of examples. So here's two, three vectors I claim are linearly independent. Well, I know they are for reasons I won't explain, but it ends up there's only one possible way of making those. So, right, I'm interested in this linear equation C1. I don't know why I have a minus there. <laughs> Sorry. Sometimes it's better I just do this now. I forget otherwise. All right. So remember, I'm, I'm forming the linear equation C times all the vectors A and seeing when it can be equal to zero. My claim for those three vectors, the only possible solution is all the C's have to be zero. And do you, do you understand why I have um, a zero over here? Okay. It's because it's actually, right. So these things are all row vectors, right? And so that means actually, if I want to be more precise on the right hand side of that equation, where I have a bold face zero, it would be like this, right? But we get tired of writing things like that, so we just write bold face. It means the vector, row or column, whatever, of appropriate dimension. Okay. All right, so those are, those are linearly independent as my claim. I didn't really prove it, I'm just telling you it is true. Now, I can prove the second example. Um, they're not linearly independent. Because here's my claim. If I take this, this vector, multiply it times 2, add this vector to it, I get this vector. It's pretty easy to see, right? Two so if I take this thing times 2, add it to this, for example, you get 2 times 1, which is 2. Add it to 2, you get 4. Here you get 4 minus 3 is 1. Here you get 6 plus 1 is 7. Okay. So that means only two of these vectors have unique information. The, one of them is redundant. So if this represented three equations, for example, which we'll get to soon, that means you actually have two equations and three unknowns. It's a, differ it's a di different problem than you probably thought. Okay. So you use this finally, and I'll finish this quickly, to introduce this thing called matrix rank. So this is the notation we use here. So if I say the rank of the matrix A, I'm talking about a measure of how many of the rows or columns of this matrix is, is um, linearly independent. So it's easiest to think about this at the beginning, assuming the matrix is square, even though it doesn't have to be this. So the rank of a matrix is the number of linearly dependent rows or equivalently the number of linearly independent columns. So it's, take a look at this example here. Now I made these examples because you'll notice these aren't random, but they're actually these things. <laughs> I just took these things and formed matrices out of them, right? The first one is a matrix formed out of those guys, and the second one is the matrix formed out of those. Those are the rows of these two matrices. So I already know that this matrix only has two linearly independent rows, because I just proved it right there, right? It only has two linearly independent <coughs> rows. And, and I haven't proven it doesn't only have one linearly independent or row, but actually it does only have two. So the rank of this matrix is two. So you see, even though it's a three by three matrix, it's, a, it's effectively only has two rows or two equations because one of them is redundant. This on the other hand is that other example where I changed this number to eight. That makes it linearly independent. So the rank of this guy is three. So what we, what we say usually is that we say this rank, this matrix here is full rank. That's normally what you want. We say this matrix here is rank deficient. Meaning even though it looks like you might have three equations, and you don't. Okay? So you can determine the rank of a matrix by doing something called elementary row operations. Well, I'll introduce the next lecture, which is um, next Tuesday. Um, and the implication of this, if you have a square matrix, okay, like Remember this big square matrix we had back here and we aspire to solve this for these rates so we can calculate them? We want to know when is it going to be possible to do this? Well, it's going to be possible to do this only if this matrix is full rank. In other words, only if this matrix has, is rank six. Only if each equation is independent of each other are we going to be able to do it. Okay. 
And that's the comment, finally, I make right there, okay? So for you to solve a set of linear algebraic equations, the matrix has to be square and it has to be full rank. It's not enough just to have the same number of equations as unknowns. All the equations have to be unique and you measure that by linear independence and, and matrix rank. So we'll come back to this on Tuesday. So MATLAB tomorrow. <laughs>